Hi everyone, this is Maha Bailey from the American University in Cairo, and with me are Shekhar, Alex, and Lise. And Lise is going to lead us through a liberating structure called uh, three W's, right? Go ahead, Lise. That's right. So it's three W's or what, say what, now what? And I came across this before I knew it was a liberating structure. So I think this is one that has been adapted from existing um, um, ideas and ways of working. I think it's used a lot in coaching, but it's a super um, easy, I think, and powerful way of reflecting on anything, right? Anything that's happened or anything that you've got data or information about that you want to make sense of and then decide what to do with. Um, I use it all the time. I sometimes do it on my own, um, but I sometimes do it in a collective group. And I think the important thing is that you're reflecting on something that's a shared experience. So in our context, we're living in four different countries and in four different roles. Uh, I think we're going to have a go at doing a what, so what, now what in terms of self-care or well-being, looking after our well-being during the COVID pandemic. So that feels like a relatively shared experience that we can um, have a go at uh, doing a what, say so what, now what. So the important thing about this, uh, um, about a what, say so what, now what, is um, keeping low on this ladder of inference. So um, often, um, I think we all find ourselves like jumping to action or deciding what to do about something. Um, particularly in my job, I find that feels like that as an operational manager, it's like, so what are we going to do? And we jump to action all the time without really stopping and thinking. So I think this allows us to um, really stop and think about, you know, what's going on? Why is that important? And now what should we do about it? It can also help, I think, if you've got different people who want to take different action or there's a misalignment or misunderstanding, actually we all can work through things in a logical way and reach conclusions together. So the important thing is to um, just think about first the what, and that's data and facts. And sometimes that's really hard to do. And we start already um, applying like a bit of meaning or some conclusions from that. So uh, meanings might be things that you add from your own personal or cultural perspective, um, assumptions that you might draw, conclusions that you might um, make uh, based on your beliefs. And then now what is um, obviously the actions that you then take um in terms of ne next steps so we work through this quite methodically in terms of um, just the what then the so what and then the now what there's somebody at my door maha <laughs> should we just pause the recording for a moment <laughs> all right and we're back um Shekhar unfortunately had to leave um, and I just wanted to make a comment about what you were saying earlier, Lisa. So the three W's is, is, I think we've used it in our context as Kolb's reflective learning cycle, just what happened, so what, now what. And I often tell my students to, to do this in their written reflections. But what I like about the liberating structure version is that you do it together about a shared context. So you're not just reflecting on your own, but reflecting in community. Um, and we were talking before we started recording about whether we start working together or we take some time to think about it first. And so one of the things about this is like with liberating structures, it's often a good idea to like just give everyone a couple of minutes to think on their own um, because some people just think faster than others, right? And some people need that time to think quietly. I think there will be a group of people if someone else starts, they'll just jump off of whatever everyone else has said, not because necessarily they're being lazy, but it's just, it starts influencing them. Um, yeah, so I think it's probably always worth having that minute or two on your own. And we were discussing it because we're going to use a Padlet to capture our collective what say what now what. And it's like, should we just start diving and writing things on the Padlet together and uh, uh, during our on our own thinking time. And then I think we've said, let's just do that on a piece of paper and uh, for a minute and then we'll put onto the Padlet what we've collectively got because otherwise we might just influence each other by put what we've or not put on, on the shared document so like so we were and we've also yeah we're going to use our shared experience of um, um uh, thinking taking care of our well-being during the pandemic so that's our invitation so um why don't we just think on our own for about a minute and just write down what are the what so like the observations and the facts about how we have 
taking care or not of our well-being during the pandemic. So yeah, we're going to try and stick with observations and facts. I'm done. I'm, I, yeah, I could keep going, but I've got a good list. Mm. So, okay. shall we? Um, I'm just wondering if I get the Padlet up and maybe share mm -hmm. the screen. Um, yeah. um, we can either all dive in there or one of us can type. I don't mind my typing. Um, share the right screen. Okay. So does anyone want to yell out some of their facts? Um, well, we were talking about exercise just before we went live. Yeah. And so I've actually done two things. I've figured out ways to exercise at home that are fun, but also cherishing outdoor exercise. I don't know if those are two things and we want, do we want to try to find um, a shared theme about exercise and then each of us say what they do underneath yeah. it or do we want to put them as separate? Let's just get them down. I think they are separate, aren't they? So you've, I mean, one of the things I observed is I've spent like most of the time in my own home, like more of the 24 hour period than I ever would have spent in my own home, which includes like having to work out how to do some of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, but also in terms of the outdoor thing. So you said uh, mm -hmm. you've worked, you've, say again, Maha, you've ex uh, I've Cherishing ex outdoor exercise. Uh, And one of I don't know if the cherishing part is a fact. Yes. Yeah. You've am I just that. doing outdoor exercise or am I cherishing? Oh, you've enjoyed it and enjoyed it. Yeah, you've enjoyed yeah. it. That's a fact. Or it's a, um, and one of the things that I had that was similar, actually, in terms of the outdoors, is that when I have been permitted to meet people, like when our restrictions have been such, it's been mainly outdoors. So I've probably spent a lot more time. At, I've met, I've done mm. stuff more outdoors than I ever would have done. Uh, exercise mm -hmm. and socializing. What about you? Yeah, Alex? same here with the socializing outdoors for sure. Yeah, I've, uh, I have some similar stuff for what I call gymless exercise, which might be the so what part of it, uh, running outdoors and yoga indoors, sort of at home. What was the other thing, Alex? You ran and? Uh, ran and yoga, do yoga. I can't, I can't do can't yoga 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 sorry yes i think indoor is it outdoor or indoor yoga indoor uh, indoor uh, yoga outdoor running so uh, outdoors oh 
Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you want one of us to type? <laughs> uh, yeah. I've done yoga too. Yeah. Um, I, I did. Don't you also meditate, Alex? <laughs> um, I, I do, but. Or that is was... that the yoga part? No, 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 I, I meditate. I didn't think of that as something that I do that's different, though, because I just did it before and I didn't do it mm. now. So. Um, that's a good I mean, point. I, I mean, objectively, my Fitbit tells me I move less. Um, that's a real data fact. Like, there's no two ways mm -hmm. about that. I don't need a Fitbit for that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I thought I, uh, um, yeah, go on. I factually, I have made my own lint juice. So in, when I was at work, I'd go and buy something from a shop. So I, I have made my own food more. <laughs> than yeah. than I, my daughter now, my daughter is better at cooking and baking than before. So we do that together. So cooking and baking with my child. Uh, I've allowed her to use a knife, which has been good for my well-being because she can really help me <laughs> by cutting up vegetables and stuff. Um, I've been I've, one fact I've about me. Experience. Go ahead. Which Go one? Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Maha, sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead. You said you have the same experience, so you're. No, was, uh... Yeah, that uh, we we started eating a lot out at first, but then we started. Um, yeah, it wasn't really. So we started cooking at home more. And the other thing I did is we visited a nutritionist at some point, sometime in the early fall. So that helped to actually get like a sense for, since we're a couple of two, um, to get a sense of, okay, so, so, so how can we, um, what's a good plan for us two to be eating? Uh, so that was, that was helpful. Impressive. I also, a uh, fact is I have worked from my kitchen table. Um, on a, on a kit, on I a, have worked for my daughter's bed. On a dining chair. But I, uh, I used to do that before. Yeah. I was going to say, is this well-being? <laughs> well, how's that related to your well-being? Yeah, how's that related to well-being? Like from your MS, your, your ergonomics is not great. Neither is sitting on a bed. <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, so I felt like actually it probably hasn't been great for my well-being to like that workstation might not have been like yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I been... I, I've been drinking more hot drinks like my normal is that I don't drink hot stuff in general um, but I drink a lot of hot drinks because my I'm online a lot and talking and I need it just to keep my voice going for the rest of the day and coffee to stay awake because I don't sleep well I don't know that that helps my well-being but it's yeah an observation I, I... I possibly have drank some more alcohol than I would have otherwise done. That's a fact. Um, and I, the other thing I thought Both about- Both two boring teetotalers. Oh yeah, but it's probably better for your health. Um, um, the other thing I noticed actually, when we were talking about um, going outdoors actually I've probably physically seen a much smaller well I have definitely physically seen a much smaller circle of people like in the last 12 months mm. Mm. and we can we can yeah. talk about something that's about well-being yeah, which is avoiding um making it easier to avoid I'm, I'm not I don't, maybe it's too hard to say toxic people but making it easier to avoid people you don't want to have in your like life or yeah. inner circle let's say I'm yeah. sure some people yeah. would say that yeah <laughs> but I would say I would say it became like one of the factors that has made someone someone you don't want to spend time with is depending on how their attitude towards the pandemic aligns with yours mm. because you don't want to spend like if you're very careful you don't want to spend time with people who are too careful if you're very carefree and careless about it you think other people are too uh, uptight about it right like mm -hmm. I've had these conversations like depending on you, you you end up spending time with people who are just about the same amount of careful that you are but not too much more and not too much less mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think you're saying you've avoided some people <laughs> <Probably. laughs> um, okay. and the other thing I don't know if I've captured is I have commute I've spent a lot less time commuting but it's definitely that right. yeah same for me 
My commute is pretty big as well. Yeah. I work from home. That just means more time with family. Yeah. Yeah. I always worked from home. Well, not always, but before the pandemic. So I don't have a lot to add there because that was my experience before. Mm. What I will say after the pandemic, um, I've started doing a lot of, I've been seeking uh, off-screen entertainment. Again, that's in the so what really, but um, so I've just put playing puzzle, playing board games and doing puzzles, um, listening to podcasts mm. and audiobooks more and just sort of trying not to look at screens. We've been doing audiobooks more as well for my yeah. kids' bedtime, yeah. especially because like reading is going to keep her awake and watching stuff is going to keep her awake. So the audio helps her sleep. Yeah. Mm. And me too, actually. Yeah. Okay, we've got a good load of what's there. Is there anything, anyone, any other mm. like facts or data that anyone just desperately wants us to capture before we move on to the say so what? Okay, I'll just good. say this because I think it's a huge quality of life improvement for me. That's a say Paper, what? Paper based task management. <laughs> so so my, uh, my, my personal task management is now in a piece, is, is now in a journal. Again, screenless. Uh, okay. I cannot do that. Not for work. The work stuff I is too complex. Paper. Well, uh, it's bound. Okay. <laughs> the notebook. Uh, <laughs> okay. so, so let's do the same again. So All we can right. reflect on our own for a minute on the say what. So like we can see some patterns emerging there, I reckon, already. But uh, what conclusions can we start to draw? What's important about that stuff? Like what do we want to draw out of that stuff that we just captured together? So let's just spend some, a minute on our own and then we'll share. A minute? Okay. Mm That was a quick minute. <laughs> Maybe we'll need a bit more. I'm good. Alex, you ready? Sure. I can probably yeah. go on for a long time, but yeah. Yeah, we could. yeah. I mean, and I yeah. guess we're doing this like in a trend. Yeah, as an exercise. Yeah. So, and so then, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is a so what, but I think there's a trend of sort of more independence in cooking and exercise. Like you don't depend on a gym or a restaurant as much as before. Mm -hmm. sort of echoing sort of the obverse of that, what I put is asking for support. So Maha with her child, me for the nutritionist, and I'm sure there are other mm -hmm. cases where um, one of the patterns that, I, that we see is perhaps something that we would try and do on our own in, in normal everyday life. We actually seek, seek support from others, which might seem a little counterintuitive. Mm. Seeking support. So seeking for support from others has been helpful, right? It's been possible, it's been useful. From people rather than businesses. Yeah, I, I don't know, Alex. Was your nutritionist a business though? Uh, maybe yes. different sort of businesses. Yes, but it's uh, maybe it's a. Uh, I'm going to step away for one sec. 
Okay. Um, I think There's the thing. I think the seeking support from others is something I had experienced as well, even with the nutritionist. They're like putting the nutritionist aside. I think I had that as well. So that's fine for me, seeking support from others um, rather How, than um, um, from other humans. <laughs> one of the themes that I think we all picked up was like outdoor living or outdoor mm. being, spending more time out of doors. And it's been really, I think uh, Maha described it as something she'd found Maha, what word did you use about your outdoor exercise? You'd found it. That I cherished it. Cherished it, um, yeah. So yeah. I've got some really lovely memories of things that I've done out, outdoors that I would never have otherwise have done, including having a really rainy picnic in a woods to celebrate a friend's birthday. We never would have done that. We would have gone indoors. <laughs> but actually, it's a really lovely memory. <laughs> pleasure forever. So I've got some really cherished memories of um, um, an um experiences of, of, of outdoor life I think be that socializing, yeah. socializing um, yeah. Yeah. and I've run outdoors I've actually done keynotes I've taught my class outdoors I mean I like teaching my class outdoors in real life in, in face to face as well but I can only do it like once or twice but now I'm always asked for teaching my class yeah so weather has no longer become a barrier for me <laughs> Uh, um, I don't know if that's a, so what, so, but. Um, Another yeah. thing I noticed that was, um, that, that we sort of had in common is sort of putting thought into our habits, sort of questioning or considering them, how we're developing, for example, in terms of cooking, um, in terms of how we exercise and not just, um, in terms of this being pro well being rather than just describing what terrible things happened during the pandemic, uh, actually putting thought into our habits. We had a bit more self-determination, mm. maybe. If yes. That well. I don't know whether that's uh, putting words into your mouth. Um, and the other thing I'd put down, yeah, so we all, we've all been at home a lot more. And I think for me, my home life and my work life have blurred a lot more. And, mm. and some, that's been an upside in some senses, but a downside in others. But um, maybe the blending of sort of, yeah, homework, social space well not social space because we're talking about gym be or you know um exercise coming into the home essentially or like being outdoors like there's a kind of blending of where you would go to the gym and do exercise or you would go to the to work and do work stuff and maybe recreation then has <laughs> mm. yes recreation thank you yeah, that's, that's a good blended more. so um I've had a bit more flexibility around my day because I've been working from home and because I haven't got that commute, like that 45 minutes before mm -hmm. and after, it's enabled me to um, be a bit more flexible in how I, what I do. And that has been an upside. So like, maybe I can go through it for a run, like, you know, because I wouldn't have had time to do that or um, I can do a bit more of that. So um, less commuting or... Flex more flexibility in... do things and that's been that's been positive for me um, um one thing that's been a positive for me and it kind of comes out in these is um just trying to go screenless to do things that don't involve screens i find that uh um that's been an important aspect of how i plan my days and actually that distinction between because i guess your working time is maybe more dominated by screens mm. than you. so you're balancing it with other things so it's been important to find a balance between screen time and not screen time and you've been deliberate in that i mean in your case especially that you were you were already working online it seems like that wouldn't become an issue but i think it's just because everyone else is also like that so you don't have to do anything with anyone that's not on a screen unless you actually deliberately do it right yeah, so people call me and say, let's Skype. And I'm like, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a walk and call you. Mm. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'd like to see you, but it's more important for me not to be looking at a screen for another you know, hour right. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think definitely the creative ways thing is important. But you've also found creative ways to do stuff online. It's just that people don't tend to think of it as, as supporting their well-being, but it is also. Mm. 
like for me, the liberating structures has been the creative way to make online meetings bearable. Mm. And I, I, I've gotten to the stage where if I'm being asked to do a meeting, I'm like, you know, if you're going to get me to sit down for two hours and listen to someone talking, I'm not coming. <laughs> There's no point. I'm, I'm going to be doing something else, you know. It's, why? Why even? Um, the, but the other thing is, I think we've developed some good and bad habits. Yeah. So I don't want to overly romanticize that because I, mean, I, I don't think I've the caffeine got, is a yeah, blessing and a curse. There's definitely been some, yeah, some, yeah, the, the caffeine, the alcohol, the food, like actually being able to cook my own or prepare my own lunch should mean that I've been more healthy, but I don't know, have I eaten more healthily or just been more sedentary? Is that where I've been? Mm. Um, so yes, yeah, uh, let's move on to the now what, unless someone has anything. Yeah. And then if we're sure. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, so I'm capturing uh, Mark Mahavad. It's not all been, you know, romantically beautiful and enriching. It's been mm -hmm. some downside. Yeah, great. Let's move on to the you know what. So what actions make sense? And, Let's maybe think about, you know, what will we take forward from this pandemic? Like when we can go back mm. to things, the things that we want to keep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what keep what actions for the remaining for the time ahead of us. So we'll do it again on our own for a minute or so. Okay. How do you want to share something? I'll share something and it's possibly a tangent and perhaps sort of, um, so I've been looking at this list and I see that a lot of it is sort of very um, internal focused, like what I'm doing, uh, how I'm being deliberate, how I'm doing all these things. And you know, apart from seeking support from others, I, I am seeing and I'm sort of thinking about myself how I, I perhaps I'm being more cut off um, than I should be. So for my own now what, what I'm gonna sort of um, take away from this is being more, um, uh, being more intentional about connecting with people more. Um, so I, I find that I was missing sort of in my own description of my own well being is there weren't enough people there. Um, so, um, so I think that's for, that's the now what for me. That, it's really, it's, I have something really similar, Alex, because I, one of my things was I've seen a much smaller circle of people and I've really missed, um, and I've loved connecting with people online. And in one sense, I've met a whole new circle of people that I never would have met with before um, online, but I'm really looking forward to when I can actually, you know, go out for dinner with some of these new people or, you know, connect with them or meet with them in, in face to face or, you know, go to a music concert, go to a live music concert and connect with a shared experience of people. So, yeah, I think there is something about, um, yeah, that's been probably one of the downsides and um, but, but perhaps being more intentional about it is a, is a, is a, is a nice way to think about it in the future. I kind of think we got something uh, that's a now what from all of this is to never really think something in, is impossible, like figure out what it is you want to do and find a way to do it with the least mm. amount of resources, kind of like the 15% solutions or the min specs, <laughs> which are liberating structures as well. 
um, yeah, there is a way to adapt and um, that can still be satisfying. Or... Uh, yeah. Mm. And in some cases, surprisingly satisfying, like we mm. all talked about that outdoor thing. And for me, that's one of the things that I will try and continue to do is like do more things outdoors. Like, and yeah, why wouldn't we just meet outdoors or go for more walks? Or um, I hope I don't end up back in, yeah venues for everything so I do want to continue um, um, being outdoors more um, and I don't want my commute back I definitely don't want my commute back every day <clears throat> so I will mm -hmm. aim to work from home more even if it's not yeah this now work thing is, is I think all of us should advocate for remote work uh, like okay Alex was already remote but you know advocating for remote work. I think the bosses are going to understand because they've seen that everyone can and does work efficiently from home. Yeah, I think the return to new to the return to normal shouldn't be returning back to what we were doing before. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other one that's always on my mind as a as a both as a faculty developer and a teacher is how to support others and as a mom, obviously, but how to support others with their well-being. Um, because a lot of times I think younger people feel like it's outside their hands or faculty feel like all well, the institution is putting so much pressure on them because a lot of issues with well-being are not personal. Like we've been talking about it as if we each have control over our well-being, but there are other people in mm. our lives, our families and our bosses our employers who make all this harder like thinking about myself as a woman especially in my culture but I think everywhere in the world women who have kids the added burden of the responsibility of being responsible for every a lot more on your own with less help than usual if you ever got help um, is one thing and to feel like that burden is on each person to manage their well-being rather than to again advocate for organizations to to find ways to to lessen the load on everyone is another issue. I'm not really sure about the now what, <laughs> but yeah. Well, maybe make be something more mindful of, of um, well-being of, um, um, mm. and, uh, and and how to support it. And maybe that other people are yeah. having this maybe worse challenges than you are, and maybe are you know um, how you can support how you can support them and supporting others in your environment is often a great way to for your own well-being, right? Uh, it's a selfish thing, but right. obviously you're giving. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, of course, obviously there are, like we're talking about our well-being, but we have our full-time jobs and, you know, everything is going fine yes. for us. Like the other people who are responsible for an elderly parent who's sick or, or they've lost their job or they have someone in their family who's got a serious issue. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of these, I don't know if they directly do they are they supposed to necessarily build on each other or is it okay that some of them are what came to our mind right. but they don't necessarily go in a linear path it's all right yeah i think so okay I think, yeah i think we could keep going longer but i think you know we so we need to stop <laughs> the structure um yeah and Got some good ideas. Just so people know we're filming this between Christmas and New Year's so like this is vacation time for all of us i think so yeah. Great. So sharing. you can see what we're doing with our well-being. Like we work for our well-being. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a less. <laughs> okay. So you want to so, just debrief for one minute and then. But so that was what. Say so what now? What did what did you enable? What did you notice? Did you like it? Would you use it? It's helpful to always stay at the ground level of like what can what you can put in a postcard, like what you can actually just capture concretely. It's really I find that always really helpful and just incredibly hard. Mm. Uh, it is do. hard. I think it is hard, and it's hard to make sure you're sticking to the what and not moving into the so what. Um, but I think by doing that exercise together, actually, we created more than we would have done on our own in terms mm. of. Um, make some common patterns and themes and kind of some conclusions that we could draw um, and obviously we tried to find a context that was significantly um, something that we could all work with for this demonstration but if you do that in your own settings or context I think it helps everyone 
own like that action because they've all worked through it together and got to that action together. Now, how is anything you um it makes sense? I mean, I like the, the process of doing it together because it helps us sort of unpack mm. uh, what it might mean and also how it might look different for different people so that when you get to that now what aspect and think about um, the usefulness of this beyond each of us, it, it helps that we've done it together. Uh, mm. So we can see a broader range of things. And there are some things that you said that I hadn't thought of, but that they were happening to me, but I hadn't written them down. So that was always also helpful to surface that and then to have that Padlet that we can come back to later. And I'm thinking it would be interesting to come back to it in a few months time yeah. and see what we've done. You know, yeah. did we promise ourselves to do something and did we do it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was what, say what now? Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.